Have you ever been curious about an artist's creative process? Join us on a journey inside the artist's studio and mind on Open Studio 5, presented by the Rice Gallery of Fine Art. In this episode, we sit down for a chat with Kansas City artist Seth Smith. Hi, my name is Seth Smith. I'm from Kansas City, and this is my Open Studio 5. What kind of music do you listen to in the studio? I like music without words uh, so that I can kind of get into that rhythm of not thinking about what I'm doing. Uh, honestly, as I'm sitting here thinking, uh, the soundtrack to the movie Rudy, I like a lot of soundtracks. I like a lot of Hans Zimmer. Um, mostly what I do is I'll actually record uh, audio cams and street cams from different places around the world. So it's kind of a white noise mumble, a lot of people moving. Uh, since I don't live in a big city and I can't get that ambient noise, I, I need something kind of bubbling under the surface and energy all the time. So those, I record hours of street noise basically. And that for some reason helps me really focus on what I'm doing. So, what is one question you think every artist should have to answer and give us your answer? Uh, what is the question that every artist should have to answer? I, I guess it, I would really like for every artist to examine every day why they're doing what they're doing. I think just asking the question is important to, because no one else can really get in your head and ask you that. So I think my answer to that question, uh, why am I doing what I'm doing? Uh, Immediately when I heard the news that we were going to have a family, I thought that I was never going to be able to go on an adventure or travel again in my life. Uh, up until that point, I'd been painting mostly abstract, colorful abstract work for years. Um, I immediately switched and started kind of painting Americana and life on the road and escapism, uh, motel pools, um, very simple, quiet themes of sunlight, water, wind. Um, all kind of wrapped up in the idea of escape and, and really very simply when I would go to my studio, I'd be able to go to those places. Uh, I always loved Hopper's work, I'd always loved, and I didn't know how to explain why until that point, what I loved about that work, but it was the stillness and the calmness and the kind of otherworldliness of it that helped me escape in that moment. And the fact that I was actually creating it then um, furthered that feeling and helped me escape, if you will. Uh, for even a few hours of the day. What's the one piece of studio gear you can't live without? I guess it would be the very simply, um, practically speaking, my, my speaker system. I, I'd like to have tunes in my studio, but I, I really think the thing that is hovering over my studio at all times and is kind of a quiet uh, Guardian is, is my big 1920s uh, motel sign that I acquired a few years back. Uh, it's pretty big, it's about eight feet wide, four feet tall, uh, red neon. Uh, I turn it on when I'm feeling kind of stumped. Uh, it's, it's kind of my mascot for my studio and I, I feel like it's, it's definitely something that I, it is an anchor to everything that I've tried to build in my studio, which is uh, an inspirational world for me to sit and even if I'm there and I'm not I'm not creative I can read the paper and I I feel like it's my space and that's the real anchor to that whole thing at what point did you realize you wanted to be a professional artist um, it really honestly wasn't until uh, I met a glassblower uh, from Wichita Kansas named Tom Hesse who went to outdoor art fairs, sold in, uh, sold his work in a number of different areas. And when I got to see how he was actually living a life in the art world, uh, how he had a farm, how he diversified everything he did, uh, it was really a window into how I could make it work for myself. Uh, and that's when I really started thinking in real practical terms, how could I do this? Uh, I think that art school falsely prepared me 
for a life in the arts because there wasn't really any roadmap. There wasn't really anybody to tell me how to travel that road. Um, again, there was there was so many different ideas being thrown around. I didn't have something that was from my background and from my area of the country that was making a living doing it. And it wasn't until that point where I could see it in action. Um, and that happened about three or four years into my college experience. Uh, and then I could start to look forward uh, to how I would do that. Okay, what is your dream project? I've never been able to do a mural before on in a public space. And I, as much as it terrifies me to think about the logistics of that, um, I love mural work, I love graffiti, I love public art. Um, and I've never been involved in that in any way. Uh, I, it's not its not that I would want a lot of people to see the work. It's not a, a question of like vanity or anything like that. I just, the idea that something that I made visually would live somewhere else on a large scale, uh, I don't know. It's just been always, it's just, I wanted to be a part of that. It's something that you admire that someone else does for so long. Uh, and I just think it adds so much to the look of our society. And there's so much, I love the textures of public art, how they correspond with maybe modern architecture and things like that. Um, I don't know, I just, it scares me, so I think I wanna do it.